You're being sold false hope in a bottle, and the evidence they're using to convince you is nothing but smoke and mirrors. There's a pattern, a well-worn path that supplement companies follow, and it preys on our hopes and wallets, all while potentially harming our health. And it's not a one-time thing. The cycle repeats itself, catching everyday people like you and me in its web. Why am I bringing this up now? Because yet another miraculous supplement is making headlines, and I want to arm you with the knowledge to see through the hype. In this video, I'm going to break down the four step hype cycle that supplement companies use to reel us in, reveal the latest product playing by this playbook, and share where you can find supplements that have proven health benefits. So what is this four step hype cycle, and how do we avoid falling victim to it? Let's start with the first step of this cycle, publishing non-clinical or animal research. This is where where the seed of hype is planted. Imagine a researcher discovers a promising effect in a lab, perhaps in a petri dish or in animal studies. These results are often exciting, showing the potential benefits that could be groundbreaking if they hold up in humans. But here's the thing, transitioning from lab results to actual human benefits is like trying to turn a sketch into a full color painting. The basic idea is there, but so many details are missing. In this world of science, these early findings are just the beginning of a long journey, not the final destination. Consider the case of Fatty15 supplements. The supplement is based on the discovery of C15, an odd chain fatty acid in dolphins. While some older dolphins developed aging associated conditions like metabolic syndrome, chronic inflammation, high cholesterol, and liver disease, others did not. Which begged the question why did some older dolphins appear to be protected against aging associated conditions? It turns out that the healthiest dolphins had the highest levels of a fatty acid called C15, which appeared to protect them from aging-related breakdown. This finding sparked the idea that maybe this fatty acid could have similar benefits in humans. But let's pause for a moment. Think about the leap we're making here. Dolphins are incredible creatures, but their biology is different from ours in significant ways. It's like finding a new ingredient that makes a cake taste better and assuming that it will do the same for a stew. The context is entirely different and so are the potential outcomes. Despite these differences, the excitement around this discovery has quickly grown. It was as if a new treasure had been found, but instead of carefully studying it to understand its true value, it's put to market and sold. This rush is the essence of the second step in the hype cycle forming a supplement company. With some eye-catching preliminary data in hand, a supplement company is established almost overnight. The goal here is to capitalize on the initial buzz and start selling. It's like finding a shiny object on the beach and selling it as a diamond before you've even had it appraised. The company behind Fatty15 jumped on this opportunity. They took the research from dolphins and quickly turned it into a product for humans. But here's the kicker. They didn't wait for solid, human, randomized controlled trials to confirm whether the C15 would have the same benefits in people. Instead, they banked on the excitement and curiosity generated from the initial findings to drive sales. This is where the hype cycle really starts to gain momentum. The company doesn't just stop at creating a product. They need to build a narrative around it, a story that will captivate people's imaginations and convince them that the supplement is the next big thing in health. And that brings us onto the third step, presenting at TEDx talks and appearing on popular podcasts. This step is all about creating creating credibility and spreading the word far and wide. TEDx talks in particular are seen as platforms where innovative ideas are shared with the world. But here's the catch. Just because that idea is shared on a TEDx stage, it doesn't mean that it's been fully vetted or that it's backed by solid evidence. It's more like a polished pitch rather than a peer-reviewed publication. The story of Fatty15 was shared on a TEDx stage, painting the picture of a groundbreaking discovery that could revolutionize health. The narrative is compelling. A humble researcher discovers a natural substance that could change lives, but the fine print, the lack of human evidence, often gets lost in the excitement. It's like a magician performing a trick. You're so captivated by the show that you don't notice the sleight of hand. The audience is left in awe, convinced that what they've just seen is real magic, when in reality, it's all smoke and mirrors. So let's take a moment and examine the human evidence for Fatty15 supplements, because this company in particular has done something that really irritates me. On their website, they share a blog post about a human study. They start by saying that this study has added further support that many of us have a nutritional C15 deficiency called cellular fragility syndrome. So back up a second here. This company discovered 
covered C15, then they created a target range, and if your levels are below that target range, not only are you deficient, you have a syndrome, and that invented syndrome is called cellular fragility syndrome. And you know what? If you treat the C15 deficiency, which is also called cellular fragility syndrome, with C15 supplements, you can reverse cellular fragility syndrome. It's like a mechanic telling you that your car has a made up problem, and conveniently, they have just the part to fix it. It's a clever marketing tactic, but it's also incredibly misleading. All of this is complete bollocks, and I haven't even got onto the misleading claims from the human study itself. If we have a look at the study, it was a randomized controlled trial of 30 participants. The primary outcome, the main thing the scientists were measuring, was that C15 in blood increased, which it did, after taking fatty 15 supplements. But if we have a look at two claims on the fatty 15 website, the first says that fatty 15 supplements raised hemoglobin levels. But if we have a look at the data, when all of the data is included, there's no difference between the fatty 15 group and the placebo group. Even in the subgroup analysis, which is a risky thing to do in a small trial anyway, there was still no statistically significant difference. What this company has done is massaged the data to generate headlines. It's the same for the other claim, which is that fatty 15 supplementation lowers liver enzymes, indicative of improved liver function and health. When all of the data is included, there are no statistically significant differences. The only value that approached statistical significance was GGT, but that only approached statistical significance, because in the placebo group, the GGT went up. There was no change in the fatty 15 group. So again, it's only when they massage the numbers and do a subgroup analysis that they find something statistically significant. If you torture the data enough, you'll produce the results you want. And even after torturing the data, the authors did not see differences in cholesterol, blood sugar levels, insulin, or inflammation. But once the story is out there, the buzz builds and the supplement company gains a following. To finish off the human clinical trials of Fatty15, before we move on to the fourth and final step of the hype cycle, let's look at one more study. A March 2024 trial compared diet and fatty acid supplements for treatment of fatty liver. A healthy diet improved weight and liver fat, but Fatty15 supplements had no effect. That's it. Those are the two human randomized controlled trials of Fatty15. Everything else is associations, and this company has taken animal research, single cell research, and associations to create this page claiming 36 cellular benefits and 80% stronger cells. But unless you know how to read through this marketing, Fatty 15 supplements sound evidence-based and something we should all take. And this is where the fourth and final step of the hype cycle comes into play making money, and then I'll discuss how to find supplements that actually work. By this point, the supplement is marketed as the next big thing in health, with promises that it can do everything from improving your metabolism to boosting your immune system. All of this is happening while the actual evidence in humans is sparse at best. It's like selling tickets to a concert before the band has even confirmed they'll play. The goal is to sell as much as possible before people start asking too many questions or before more rigorous research can be conducted that might contradict the initial claims. The cycle thrives on urgency and the fear of missing out. People are drawn in by the allure of a quick fix, a miracle pill that promises to solve their health issues with minimal effort. It's a narrative we all want to believe in. Who wouldn't want to take a simple solution to their complex health problems? But the reality is that health doesn't come in a bottle. They require time, effort, and often a multifaceted approach. Supplements like Fatty15 capitalize on our desire for easy answers, but they often leave us with nothing more than an expensive placebo at best, and at worst, they can cause harm. The real danger here is that the cycle not only wastes money, but it also has the potential to erode trust in science and medicine. When people realize they've been sold a product that doesn't live up to its claims, they can become disillusioned with the entire field of healthcare. It's like crying wolf. Eventually everyone stops believing, even when there's a real danger, and this erosion of trust can have serious consequences, especially when it comes to public health initiatives and evidence-based medicine. Instead of over-promising, why not just be honest? A supplement company can absolutely explain why they're excited about a particular molecule, but instead of assuming that those benefits will translate to humans, why not say that the clinical trials in humans are underway? We're not sure if the animal results will translate to humans, but by purchasing the product, you're helping to fund human research to see if there are any true benefits. But in reality, that's not going to happen. So what can we 
do about it? Well, the first step is awareness. By understanding the hype cycle and recognizing the patterns, you can start to see through the marketing tactics and make more informed choices. It's not about rejecting all supplements outright, but about being discerning and critical in how you evaluate them. Look for products that are backed by solid human research from randomized controlled trials, not just animal studies or lab results. And remember, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The story of Fatty15 is a prime example of the cycle in action. It started with an intriguing discovery in dolphins and was quickly turned into a marketable supplement and is now being promoted as the next big thing in health. And this isn't the first time we've seen this pattern. Many other supplements have followed the same path with similar results. For example, resveratrol, NMN, antioxidant supplements, and the list goes on. Watch out for this four-step hype cycle because it doesn't just negatively impact our wallets, it can negatively impact our health as well. Antioxidant supplements, for example, blunt the positive effects of exercise. When we exercise, we stress our body and create oxidants. That short-term oxidative stress signals to our body that it needs to become stronger and fitter. Antioxidant supplements blunt that signal, preventing our body from adapting to exercise and improving. Resveratrol supplements do the same thing. They blunt the positive effects of exercise, but they also lower our testosterone. Instead, here is how to find supplements that actually work. Consumerlab.com is a fantastic resource. It provides independent test results and information to help you identify the best quality health and nutritional products. They are also very cautious in their supplement reviews and avoid hype. The NIH Supplement Database is another fantastic resource. For example, here's what the database says about creatine. Studies in both the lab and sports settings have found that short-term creatine supplementation for five to seven days in both men and women often significantly increases strength and power work involving multiple sets of maximal effort muscle contractions, and sprinting and soccer performance. That's why if I could only have one supplement, it would be creatine because of the robust evidence base. And I'll put a link in the pinned comment to a page that summarizes the supplements that I take. And speaking of creatine, make sure to check out this next video here that explains the research that convinced my grandma to start taking creatine.